This is the Hagman and Hagman Report for today, Thursday, December 19th, 2013. I'm Doug Hagman, co-host, along with me is my son, Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Tonight, we are opening the show with a gentleman, but Dave Hodges, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Doug and Joe, and it's great to be here. We've got some interesting things going on, my friends. Uh, virtually every source I have that's been credible has reached out to me in the past four to five days. I, I know ex-Intel types that went into hiding with like-minded people to escape the ravages of what could be coming. And this was just about a year ago when they ran for the hills, literally and figuratively. One of these families who I was close with for many years has reached out to me and broken their silence. And they have shared with me a lot of what's going on. And that kind of started the cascade of information. I'm almost overwhelmed talking about this. Let me start with what we can definitely put our fingers on here and say this is what Obama tried to do to us. Obama tried to launch a false flag nuclear attack against the citizens of this country. And depending on who I talk to, the details differ a little bit, but there's no question that he did this. Now, some estimates tell me that they were going to try to impact as many as 39 cities. Other people told me it was as little as three. Three or 39, this president is a traitor. And then when he failed in that regard, he attempted to take down the power grid, as I predicted he might do back in September. I said, this is prime and fertile territory for a power grid takedown, because how many times have we seen a drill take place only to have a real event emerge out of that drill. 9-11, the Boston Marathon bombings, the 7-7. And each time, some aspect of our military has thwarted Obama in his desires to initiate a major false flag, which would have been followed by martial law. Right now, we're looking at a situation in this country where the military leadership in this country is playing a game of chicken with Obama. They have, on their own, procured nuclear weapons they're holding in abeyance and they're essentially issuing their own ultimatums from behind the scenes from what i've been told and this is one of the reasons i understand that obama decided to leave the white house and go to hawaii where he felt safer and i've had a number of sources tell me he feels extremely threatened in these situations and if people think this sounds outrageous I would just point to the fact that Obama has fired 200 plus command level military officials in his presidency Obama is attempting to get a hold of the entire nuclear arsenal. I have good information that he's never been allowed to carry the nuclear football. I have information that says that he's been try he's tried to get a hold of the launch codes for the submarines. And this is why we now have two fired heads of our nuclear arsenal. The military is resisting Obama. He has retaliated by bringing in untold numbers of Russian soldiers everywhere from Victorville to Idaho to Alaska to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and all across this country. I'm getting reports of Russian soldiers training on our soil, and now the Chinese have joined this. And to me, the most outrageous thing that this president has done, aside from the attempted false flag events, is he has allowed our enemies, who have threatened to nuke us in the last year over Syria and Iran, to join in the Grid X2 power grid takedown drill. And he's also allowing them to participate in next year's largest war games on the planet, called RIMPAC, and RIMPAC is a war game that is historically used to plan against Chinese and Russian military tactics in the Pacific with other nations. I raised this question with a friend of mine who is a retired general who's trying to stay low profile now because these generals are being threatened when they speak out, but he did tell me RIMPAC is morphing away from being a defense force against the Russians and Chinese, quite obviously now with their admission to it, into an international peacekeeping force. My operating hypothesis, and a lot of people feel that this is correct, is that this is now an international peacekeeping force which will carry out the mandate of the UN Small Arms Treaty in which they call for host nations to bring in foreign troops 
to enact gun confiscation in a prelude to a crackdown. And this is what the U.N. calls for, and this is what I think we're seeing. Uh, Dave, uh, let, me, let me just say this, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Hodges just said about RIMPAC. For those unfamiliar with what RIMPAC is, just very briefly, RIMPAC is a military exercise, joint military, multinational exercise. It's the uh, world's largest international maritime warfare exercise. It's really hosted by our Navy, the United States Navy Pacific Fleet. But but the bottom line with this is, it's is, as Dave mentioned, it has morphed since it was first established back in the 70s now. It's morphed into something totally different. And there are people that right now are... Um, who are dealing with or who are saying, look, there's something about this exercise that's not right. And, Mr. Hodges, uh, yeah, if you can uh, get into some detail, what this article, The Invasion Will Come From Within, that was published on your site yesterday, where do you see this all going? You know, I'm not really sure about the operational details. I know about the general threat. I think I know really every detail I'd have to be on the other side. But let me just explain to you what I know is going on in Gatlinburg. And as soon as I ran this story, and I know people that live in Gatlinburg. I've had Dr. Susan Hellman from Gatlinburg on my show but other people are coming forward. Let me tell you what I do know about Gatlinburg, because I think it's the canary in the mine, as well as also what's going on in Fort Carson uh, Army Base in Colorado Springs. But let's go to Gatlinburg first. I got reports from people, uh, and Dr. Hellman was one of these people, that told me that Russians were suddenly showing up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And the curious thing was these Russians all spoke perfect English. Now, if you take any immigrant group, you're going to have people who are proficient in the language and people who do not speak the language. That would be part and parcel to any immigrant group. But no, they spoke perfect English. In addition, they were extremely aloof and removed from their community. They only kept to themselves. These events also corresponded to helicopter landings at night at golf courses. In fact, next door to where Dr. Hellman lives, she detailed on my show how her and her husband watched these helicopters fly in. It's too dark for them to see what's being offloaded. In addition, uh, Gallenberg is lies at the heart of the entrance of the Great Smoky Mountains. That and their national parks in the area are being closed by DHS, not the National Forest Service, but DHS. And then we'll go to Sherry Wilcock, where she photographed as videos of Russian soldiers and DHS vehicles and reports from National Guard units that validate the fact that the DHS and Russians in eastern Tennessee and western Kentucky are indeed working together. And recently I've been flooded on my email from people in Gatlinburg. In fact, I got an email from a lady in Bozeman, Montana, who said her parents are in Gatlinburg and they're saying large numbers of Muslims also showing up. This has led me to conclude from the numerous reports on Muslims that they're going to be a fifth column operation. But I think what's happening, gentlemen, is we're seeing the sides of civil war being drawn. Obviously, the American military is not on board with this president. As we've detailed, DHS is armed to the teeth with 2.2 billion rounds of ammunition. They've acquired 2,700 armored personnel carriers. They're working with the Russians. They're working with the Chinese. And now there appears to be the Muslims involved. I suspect it's the Hamas and Hezbollah that has come in under the cover of darkness with illegal immigration across our southern border. And even that's been reported in the mainstream media. These are who I think are the sides of the coming civil war. And now I've come across new information as of today that there, the military is in fear that our military in Afghanistan and the contingent we have left behind in Iraq is in grave danger. And if civil war does break out, they will be stranded and carved up by the Russians and the Chinese. That's a frightening proposition. Then you go to Colorado Springs. I have pictures that have run publicly of Russians training with Americans, and I've seen as many as 40, 50 Russians in these pictures. And yet, according to the local media, there's only about 10 to 12 Russians that are supposed to be training there. Well, I was told by a general out of Arizona who was forced into retirement because he wouldn't engage in false flag weather attacks on behalf of the Air Force towards the end of the last century. He has told me that his people tell him there could be as many as 20,000 Russian commandos 
at Fort Carson. Fort Carson is one of the big jumping off points for our troops to go to the Middle East from. That means there's a lot of empty barracks. There's a lot of resources there that Russian soldiers could come in and take advantage of as if they were Americans, run in the media as well, is that the Russians are helping to police public activities in southern Colorado, like they were at the uh, AAA baseball team in Colorado Springs doing security and parking lot detail. Well, that's a little bit beneath a Russian commando, unless you're training them for martial law. You're training them how to interact with the American people. Yeah, how do you respond to people like that who say, this activity is normal? The, the foreign troops, it's a normal mutual aid training type exercise. Well, I'll go to a different situation where the FEMA bilateral agreement signed between that agency and the Russian military, which allows 15,000 Russian soldiers to come into this country to train for natural disaster preparedness. My initial response to anyone who would challenge what I'm saying would be, are the National Guard, are they going on vacation? Are we disbanding the National Guard? What about local law enforcement? Why do we need 15,000 Russians on American soil to train with FEMA? Well, I can tell you why they're here to train with FEMA. They're here to train for martial law not natural disaster. I mean, a natural disaster story doesn't even make any sense. You're looking at a 200-plus purge of the military. When did this start? Did it start before Benghazi, or was Benghazi kind of the catalyst for this purging of the military? It goes back to as long as Obama's been the president. He has promised to withdraw the troops from Afghanistan, yet he's fired three commanders, that's unprecedented in a theater war in the history of this country. Now, as far as the Benghazi event, uh, one of my sources told me, and he's, and I was really hesitant to trust him because I said, you're only one source. End up being correct, though. And I went with it and I published it. After Benghazi, we quickly learned General Ham, the head of AFRICOM at the time, and Admiral Gayet, the head of Carrier Task Force 3, now remember, this is in a war zone at a time when the war rhetoric was very high, against Syria and Iran. It looked like war was imminent. So you have two of the top four military commanders in the Middle East refused a stand-down order from Panetta in behalf of Obama to not rescue Chris Stevens, the ambassador who was under attack. Ham was launching his commandos, and Gayet was going to provide air cover and air intelligence. They were both arrested by their number two. I don't know the name of the man who arrested Gayet, but the man who arrested General Ham was Colonel Rodriguez. We've come to learn that he is a member of the CIA. And both uh, men and their rescue efforts were negated. This was a mini coup. You're yep. talking two of the top four commanders in the Middle East refusing a presidential directive in an area in which a state of war existed between the U.S., Syria, and Iran, and possibly Russia and China as well and yet they refused a presidential order. But when you come right down to it, a lot of our military and their leadership have family members and friends in this country, and they can see where this is headed. Okay. And, and, uh, and when Obama has attempted to pull out the nuclear card and was unable to do what he wanted to do with nuclear weapons against this country, and when he wanted to take down the power grid, this is where I think the military is deciding they're getting their back up. I've been told, and as outrageous as this sounds, I've been told that not only past military leadership is participating in this, but present military leadership they're making plans for long-term guerrilla warfare the thinking is is if obama moves and is successful with a false flag in which he can justify bringing out martial law and it's so horrific we need foreign troop help to help us with all these problems there could be a standoff here between the military and the occupation forces that obama is is grooming under DHS, namely the Russians and the Chinese. But the thinking is on the part of the military, from what I'm told, is they don't think that they can win conventional battle on our soil now because the military here is so depleted because so many combat troops are overseas. And they know those troops are doomed if this breaks out. What I've been told, that there are Americans, they're preparing for long-term guerrilla warfare. A little bit's been mentioned about Janet Napolitano, uh, former DHS chief, but what I've also come to find out, two of my sources, actually now a third, has told me that she was the one carrying the nuclear football, that the military would not give it 
to Obama because he is a foreigner, and they know this, and they would not allow him to have it. And so she carried the nuclear football. But I will tell you this. I think she might be on the right side of this. I think she looked at these events that were coming and said, I want nothing to do with it, and that's why she left. 